uh, let's look at the critical front of uh, Obama not qualified for the presidency. We're very happy to be joined once again by our friend and distinguished colleague here, uh, Phil Berg of, uh, of Pennsylvania, distinguished lawyer, former candidate on the Democratic ticket for governor, senator of Pennsylvania, Democratic Party official in Pennsylvania, and, of course, the courageous lawyer who has uh, led the fight, and led the fight indeed, uh, towards the Supreme Court and other uh, legal instances to uh, to find out about Obama's uh, citizenship and qualification for the presidency. Welcome to you, Phil. My pleasure. We finally hooked up. Sorry. We're so glad you could be here again. You're so busy. You don't have Friday afternoon for us anymore. Please give us an update. Well, update. We have three. First, uh, the best place to look for updates is ObamaCrimes.com. O B A M A C R I M E S dot com. Um, we have three cases pending. One is with the uh, they're all in federal court. The one is where I was dismissed in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, where the judge dismissed said I didn't have any standing. When he did that, he basically well he said that I didn't have standing and you didn't have standing, Webster, and no one in this country had standing and. In the, in the future, perhaps Congress will decide who should have standing to be able to bring an action against the U.S. Constitution. Um, I think the judge is completely wrong. This is the case we took up to the U.S. Supreme Court on an emergency basis to try to have some injunctions issued. They did not. Um, then they turned down my um, uh, emergency request for a writ of certiorari without, without judgment. Uh, but the case is alive and well. It's in the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. Briefs have been filed by both sides, and they've now scheduled tentatively argument for the uh, end of May of this uh, year, May of 2009. So we're encouraged by that because that will be a public hearing, and um, hopefully one of these days the national media will be embarrassed enough to start carrying this story, which should be the number one story in this country. So, Phil, that's the end of May where? Um, in the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, which is, sits in Philadelphia. The, right. third cir- the Third Circuit covers Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Okay. Okay, so that's on the standing issue. The, the next case we have is we sued Hollister versus Barry Sotoro, a.k.a. Barack Hussein Obama. And we sued Barry Sotoro because we believe that is his legal name from Indonesia, where he was adopted, and we believe he never formally changed his name after that. Well, that case, we'll be putting up a new press release any time now. I've just been on trial the past couple weeks, so we were a little behind. But the judge in that case gave such a horrendous opinion. That judge in that case was so biased from the inception because when we initially filed the lawsuit, we had a local Washington, D.C. attorney, as you need, and myself and Larry Joyce, another attorney from out in uh, Arizona, had filed as co-counsel, and we filed what's called a um, motion to be admitted pro hoc vici. Uh, This is when you're admitted when you're not a member of that particular court. I've been admitted to pro hoc vici courts all across this nation, and in a case I just filed the other day, was filed the next day they accepted me pro hoc vici. This particular judge decided that he was going to hold it in abeyance, so we appeared in front of him and explained our background, our credentials, and why he should admit us for this particular case. Oh, excuse me. So I think that showed his bias right from the outset. His opinion is outrageous because um, it's a five-page opinion, and it will be posted shortly, if not yet, on our site. His opinion, we, we've been arguing under the Constitution, as you know and your listeners know, there's three requirements for president. you would be 35 years of age. You've lived in this country for 14 years, and there's a question with Obama on that, but we give him that. And the third requirement is you'd be natural born. Well, we can go into that, but just the judge in the D.C. case, he writes in his opinion nothing about natural born. He calls it, he talks about Obama being native born. I mean, I I don't even understand. Um, but I, <laughs> he but I hope not. He's not reading the Constitution, has he? No, not, not at all. And, uh, and then he filed a rule to show cause against our Washington, D.C. attorney, why he should not impose sanctions against him for filing this kind of lawsuit. So we, we responded to that, and we appealed both. We're now in the District of Columbia Court of Appeals on that case. And uh, we look forward to uh, you know filing our briefs there and have an argument in that court. In now, that let case, me just pause. That, that would be Rule 11 sanctions for a frivolous lawsuit, am I right? That's correct. 
That's and that can be heavy stuff. So this is this is very menacing. People should realize this is not a, a tea party, right? You're, this is a, a an angry uh, judge, I guess, in this case. Right, right. But what happened was <clears throat> we <clears throat> excuse me we lucked out on that because the judge the judge failed to hold a hearing um, on the sanction issue, and by not holding a hearing. Um, you cannot impose monetary sanctions. You can only do so. He ended up giving just a, rem uh, a reprimand to our local attorney uh, because the judge failed to. If you want to impose dollar sanctions, which you can uh, up to a lot of money, you must hold a hearing. So he didn't do that. So the judge, I guess, basically screwed up on that um, and reprimanded our attorney. But we're filing an, we filed an appeal on that because we should. There should have been no question of sanctions. I mean, we are just trying to enforce the U.S. Constitution. And we feel we had a very legitimate case on the interplay direction with Hollister, and we'll see how the District of Columbia Court of Appeals handles it, <clears throat> and or we'll track it up to the U.S. Supreme Court. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a third case pending, which I can't talk about. That's the case under seal. Um, I filed a motion to unseal the case, but uh, they filed a motion against it. So the next date of significance is... Um, I think April 20th, but, uh, well, something else was just filed, which I can't talk about. But I, I, I feel that uh, that case will open up this whole case, and hopefully one of these judges one of these days will grant us what we need, and that's discovery. If we get discovery in any of these cases, uh, Obama's days as being a legitimate president, which he isn't, are numbered. Um, we have heard that he has spent over $1 million in defending all these lawsuits across this nation. Why would you spend a million dollars if you have nothing to hide? I mean, this is if we think about this, this is the most outrageous situation. We have a incumbent, we have a president who I call him a usurper because he, he's not properly there, uh, which means that all these things he's signing, all these uh, acts he's signing and appointments he's making are all avoidable, or actually void, but they're avoidable <clears throat> when um, the courts come around to it. So. And I think we're getting more and more people on our side. We're, we're, our website's down, right? I mean, uh, down on numbers. We're only getting a million hits a day right now. Um, we were up to like two million, but we're getting a million hits a day. So we ask people to spread the word of our website. Now, interesting enough, coming up um, is the um, tea parties are spreading across the nation on the issue of uh, the taxation issue. Well, one person promoting, uh, I think it came from the national group, said one of the signs they should bring to the tea party is. Mr. Obama, show us your birth certificate, which is significant because they're trying to attack Obama, saying that constitutionally they can't do what he's doing as far as all this spending. Well, there's nothing more critical issue than our issue, which is the fact right. that he's not a legitimate. He is constitutionally ineligible. He's constitutionally unqualified to be president. And it's really a disgrace that the U.S. Congress didn't do what they were supposed to do on January 8th because they can only vote for a legitimate candidate, as well as the electors back in December. Hang on one minute, Phil. We'll uh, get a few more points covered, and then we'll let you go. Okay. Joined on the line by Phil Berg in Philadelphia. And as Phil points out, if you're going to go to an anti-Obama protest, a Tea Party, and so forth, the most effective argument you can make is the question of the usurper, not qualified to be president, illegal, foreign citizen, uh, undocumented alien, if you like, uh, and the, therefore these measures are null and void. Much better that than to get into some of the, uh, shall we say, Austrian uh, rhetoric that tends to fly around these, these tea parties. So, Phil, so wasn't there another one, the interpleader? Well, the, no, the, um, that's, part, that's the Hollister case, the interpleader okay. case. Uh, the fourth case, which we just haven't put together yet, we're going to be following a quo warranto case, which several other attorneys have done. Ours will be better when we file it. <clears throat> the best place to be is with us. There's some other attorneys out there doing things. Uh, there's a female attorney doing things, which I will have nothing to do with because she's a loose cannon. People can figure out who she is. Um, you can't keep uh, – she's, like, got a lot of um, active-duty servicemen saying they're going to sue. Well, that's bad because they can't sue in our Article Three courts, which, like in Pennsylvania, would be common pleas and commonwealth and superior and supreme court. They're subject to the military courts, and they're going to get court-martialed, and or they could uh, friendly fire can occur because, you know, they, you can't do that. Uh, so I think she's really jeopardizing those people. And um, 
Phil, if I may, I guess maybe I can say what you can't say because you have to observe the the court's decorum. But I'm I'm of course uh, okay. something of a talker here. Right. This is Orly Tate's. Uh, she she is she's got her picture in the Globe uh, as somehow being a leading light of this movement. She seems to have arrived on the scene rather late in the day and with tactics which always seem to be counterproductive and questionable. So you're left very, very puzzled. But for sure we know the gold standard in this anti-Obama litigation is Phil Berg. And if you want to know what's going on, you've got to go to ObamaCrimes.com. It deserves everybody's financial support and ObamaCrimes.com political support. And indeed, make up uh, crudely lettered signs if you're going to go to the tea parties or whatever else they are. Make your crudely lettered signs based on ObamaCrimes.com, and don't let some misleader tell you that that's not an admissible issue. In some ways, that's the most effective issue when it comes to this.